On Thursday, most Tory MPs were virtually silent during the autumn statement, except when the triple lock for state pensioners was confirmed. Social media, on the other hand, has been screaming. Not only the organised opposition and the usual suspects, but also ordinary Conservatives, who seemed to feel betrayed by what Jeremy Hunt announced. Many said they were leaving the party, some perhaps to join reform or just walking away in despair. Quite a few even said, if we're going to have a socialist budget with high tax, more targeted spending for the NHS and education, but cuts in spending delayed into the future, well, we might as well have those who actually believe in it all in power, a Labour government. Wow. Well, all of the analysis suggests that the squeezed middle will hurt most. For the strivers, putting in that extra shift, higher rates of income tax will come frighteningly sooner. The Office of Budget Responsibility says that average disposable incomes will fall by 7.1% over the next two years. Quotes, two years of shock for the middle classes, says the Independent Institute for Fiscal Studies, as that tax take hits its highest level since 1948. Even the rather left-of-centre Resolution Foundation think tank says the autumn statement piled further pressure on the squeezed middle earners. Now, this morning, the Times newspaper says it'll cost middle Englanders around £20,000 a year. But the lowest paid in work will also be hit by basic income tax sooner, as the amount that all of us can earn before we pay any tax is frozen until 2027-28. Now, we're in a recession right now, and we're going to remain in it next year, with growth only just returning in 2024-25. Then there's a less generous energy support plan, possibility of higher council taxes without a referendum, higher mortgages and, of course, higher private sector rents. The biggest boost, perhaps the only boost, is for those on benefit, but they will now have to prove that they really can't work. But, as The Telegraph points out, that's the only reform in a costly and cumbersome benefit system that costs taxpayers billions. There's help too, as I said at the very top, for those who finished working, state pensioners. Like benefits, the state pensioners increased in April 23 by a little over 10%. But that freeze in the personal allowances could drag more of them into paying tax. The cuts in public spending won't kick in until the other side of the general election, which is likely in the autumn of 24 or possibly even the spring of 25. Higher taxes soon and lower public spending in the future are designed to put the public finances in order, bring down inflation and with it interest rates, and to reassure the money markets, who will still be getting over £100 billion a year in interest from the government for still very high borrowing levels. So, today, with those in the know, we look at the economics of it. Does it add up? What it means for businesses and for consumers like you and me. And, of course, the politics of it all.